American Catholic History is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. Hello, and welcome to American Catholic History. If you like our podcast, be sure to rate us and give us a review wherever you get your podcast. I'm Noelle Heaster Crow. And I'm Tom Crow. Today we're talking about an 85 year old pilgrimage, which started mostly by accident when some Eastern Catholic nuns dedicated their new convent and received an unexpected gift from the Pope. There's a whole lot to unpack in this story, starting with the presence of Eastern Rite Catholics in the United States. They weren't part of the story of American Catholicism until the late 19th century when they started arriving in large numbers. What caused this migration? Well, the short version is Eastern Rite Catholics in Central and Eastern Europe had lived for centuries in the mountains and valleys as farmers and laborers, living a basic life. They were serfs and conducted business by barter. The economic and political upheavals of the 18th and 19th centuries really overturned their way of life and caused many to flee, with many heading to the United States. They brought their Catholic faith with them, but Eastern Catholicism has some very different traditions from Latin Rite Catholicism. Icons rather than statues, no holy water or kneelers in the church, the iconostases, and of course, married priests. This last part, while an ancient tradition in their right, was scandalous in a land where Catholicism had been established as Latin, which meant priests took vows of celibacy. Many bishops here in the United States were unwelcoming at best and downright hostile at worst. Some bishops and priests were just plain ignorant of the Eastern Rite of the Church. Some thought that since these Catholics had come West, they should just live as Latin Rite Catholics. Some had very practical motives. They were already having a tough time just establishing a church infrastructure for the Latin Rite Catholics, and they were facing enough tension and opposition from the Protestants who held political power, that having a bunch of fellow Catholics whose faith traditions were so obviously different could cause the Protestants to wonder if these Catholics really could be trusted. Yes, they had to fight for years against the hierarchy here in the U.S. and even against the Vatican at times to maintain their traditions. Many years later, they were granted their own diocese here in the U.S., but that's a story for another day. Let's get back on track with the pilgrimage and the nuns. Where do they come in? Well, in 1911, a group of Bazillion sisters, that's Bazillion as in the Order of St. Basil the Great, not a ridiculously large number. So a group of Bazillion sisters came over to minister to Eastern Catholic immigrants in Philadelphia. In 1913, Mother Makrina Melnichuk came over from Galicia in what is today northwest Ukraine and southeast Poland with two other sisters and joined those already in Philadelphia. In 1921, Mother Makrina and a group of sisters went to Cleveland, Ohio, where they established the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Convent and Province. They moved again to Elmhurst, Pennsylvania, just outside of Scranton, where in 1923, they built St. Nicholas Orphanage and School, a large building still in use today. Just two more moves were in store for Mother Macrina and her growing order of sisters. The penultimate one was to Factoryville, Pennsylvania in 1932, where they stayed for just a couple of years. While they were there, they were informed that Oak Hill, the mansion and large estate of coal baron J.V. Thompson, a recently deceased millionaire, would soon be up for sale. The mansion and grounds near Uniontown, Pennsylvania, would become sacred ground for the embattled Eastern Rite Catholics of the United States. After completing the purchase in 1934, they asked Bishop Basil Tackett, who was by this time the first Eastern Catholic bishop in the U.S., to come bless and dedicate the new convent. So on September 3, 1934, Labor Day weekend, Bishop Tackett came to Uniontown to dedicate Oak Hill as Mount St. Macrina. We should interject here that Mount St. Macrina was not named after Mother Macrina. They both were named after St. Macrina, the sister of St. Basil the Great, the 4th century Cappadocian father of the church and founder of monasticism. And in fact, St. Basil credited St. Macrina as being the one who taught him all the theology that he knew. Exactly. But what they didn't expect at the dedication of Mount St. Macrina was the rest of the crowd. Yes. More than 3,000 people came out that Labor Day weekend from all over into the northeastern United States. Remember, the lands of their ancestry had endured the upheavals of the 19th century, which prompted the first waves of emigration in the 1880s. But since that time, things had gotten much worse for Christians in Central and Eastern Europe. Atheistic communism took hold and spread from Moscow, and the Iron Curtain descended. Millions of Christians found themselves trapped in a godless hellhole, so many thousands fled, including my own maternal Ukrainian ancestors, fleeing from lands then controlled by the disintegrating Austro-Hungarian Empire. And so many of them came to the United States. So the dedication of a large new place of pilgrimage and worship was a big deal to them. Clearly. It was a sign that they had come to the right place. The tensions with the Latin Rite bishops and the Vatican over their legitimate Eastern traditions hadn't been easy, but in this dedication they saw hope. 
So that first year was a bit of a fluke, but since Eastern Catholics had a strong history of pilgrimage or otpust from the old country, it may have turned into something more regular on its own, but an unexpected gift gave it a new purpose. In 1935, Pope Pius XI sent the Sisters of Mount St. Macrina an icon of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Accompanying the icon was a decree from His Holiness giving the sisters official papal approval to conduct an annual pilgrimage during the period following the Assumption of the Blessed Mother, known in the East as the Dormition of the Theotokos, and exhorting the sisters to spread devotion to Mary under the title of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. And thus the pilgrimage was born. What I love about Pope Pius XI's gift to these Eastern Catholic nuns is how it prefigures what John Paul II famously said about the need for the church to breathe with both lungs, East and West. Indeed. Beginning in 1935 and ever since, tens of thousands of Catholics, Eastern and Latin Rite, and others, descend on Mount St. Macrina in southwest Pennsylvania for a long weekend of liturgy, prayer, veneration, quiet moments of meditation, delicious food, and friendship. To this day, that icon from the Pope leads the pilgrimage processions. At its peak in the mid-1950s, more than 120,000 came, and for three years, from 1955 to 57, the principal divine liturgy was offered by none other than Fulton Sheen, who was by ritual. More than 85,000 were in attendance at that liturgy in 1955, and a special sanctuary and altar was constructed with a 40-foot high image of Our Lady of Perpetual Help extending up behind the altar. That year, he actually worked with both Radio Free Europe and Voice of America to make sure that his liturgy and in particular his sermon were broadcast behind the Iron Curtain. He wanted to make sure that the people still living under communist oppression knew that their relatives in the United States hadn't forgotten about them or fallen out of familial loyalty. His message directly to those people was, We don't hate you. We don't want to destroy you. We are praying for your freedom. Mother Macrina didn't live long enough to hear this sermon, however. She had died in 1949 at the age of 70, but she saw her order grow significantly during her time, sending out sisters all over the Midwest and up into New England to establish schools, orphanages, and places for mothers. The annual pilgrimage, however, is still the crowning moment for the Brazilian sisters at Mount St. Macrina. Mother Macrina, in an invitation to pilgrims in 1943, explains why it remains so powerful. She said, Put aside your personal problems and come to Uniontown. Come to bathe your soul in the silvery dew of divine grace. Come to the pilgrimage. Put on the golden vestments of spiritual renewal and ask our Heavenly Mother to heal all the ills of your hearts. You've been listening to American Catholic History on the StarQuest Production Network. If you've been enjoying our podcast, please be sure to give us a rating and a review. To learn more about today's topic, to find previous episodes, and to send feedback, please visit sqpn.com history. You can email us at history at sqpn.com or follow StarQuest on social media at facebook.com slash starquestmedia or on Twitter at sqpn. I'm Noelle Heaster Crow. And I'm Tom Crow. Thank you once again for joining us on American Catholic History on StarQuest. This is Dom Bettinelli, CEO of the StarQuest Production Network, with a special message. StarQuest needs your help. Over the past year, we've grown by leaps and bounds. Every month, we produce dozens of shows covering numerous topics and all explore the intersection of faith and pop culture, which is the core of our mission. Some are among the most popular shows SQPN has ever produced in all its 13-year history. We're fulfilling our mission of evangelization in a whole new way, but that success is in danger. We must reach the financial break-even point if we're going to continue. Creating a dozen shows has caused our expenses to go up. We currently aren't making ends meet, and we're rapidly eating through our reserves. Soon they'll be gone, and we'll have to cut back many of our shows. We might even have to shut down altogether. That's why it's crucial we hear from you right now. Please visit sqpn.com slash give today and click the become a patron button to make your monthly pledge or to give a one-time gift click the donate button the need is urgent so please go to sqpn.com slash give today thank you from all of us at starquest and god bless you may we hear from you today